Act Three of Adelphi or the Brothers by Terence, translated by Henry Thomas Riley. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act the Third, Scene One, and the Sostrata and Canthara from the House of the Former. Prithee, my dear nurse, how is it like to end? Like to end, do you ask? In troth, right well, I trust. Her pains are just beginning, my dear. You are in a fright now, just as though you had never been present on such an occasion, never been in labor yourself. Unfortunate woman that I am, I have not a person at home. We are quite alone. Geta, too, is absent. I have no one to go for the midwife or to fetch Eskinus. <sighs> the faith, he'll certainly be here just now, for he never lets a day pass without visiting us. He is my sole comfort in my afflictions. Things could not have happened, mistress, more for the advantage of your daughter than they have. Seeing that violence was offered her, so far as he is concerned, it is most lucky. Such a person, of such disposition and feelings, a member of so respectable a family. It is indeed as you say. I entreat the gods that he may be preserved to us. They stand apart on seeing Geta. Scene 2. Enter Geta on the other side of the stage getta to himself hmm now such is our condition that if all were to combine all their counsels and to seek a remedy for this mischief that has befallen myself my mistress and her daughter they could find no relief oh wretched me so many calamities beset us on a sudden we could not possibly extricate ourselves violence poverty oppression desertion infamy what an age is this oh shocking villainy oh accursed race oh impious man unhappy me how is it that i see geta hurrying along thus terrified geta continuing whom neither promises nor oaths nor compassion could move or soften nor yet the fact that the delivery was nigh on hand of the unfortunate woman on whom he had so shamefully committed violence sostrata apart to canthara i don't well understand what he is talking about pray let us go nearer to him sostrata geta continuing ah oh, wretched me i am scarcely master of my senses i am so inflamed with anger there is nothing that i would like better than for all that family to be thrown in my way that i might give vent to all my wrath upon them while this wound is still fresh i could be content with any punishment so i might only wreak my vengeance on them first i would stop the breath of the old fellow himself who gave being to this monster then as for his prompter cyrus out upon him how i would tear him piecemeal i would snatch him by the middle up aloft and dash him head downward upon the earth so that with his brains he would be strew the road i would pull out the eyes of the young fellow himself and afterwards hurl him headlong over some precipice the others i would rush along drive drag crush and trample them under foot but why do I delay at once to acquaint my mistress with this calamity? Moves as if going. Sostrata to Canthara. Let us call him back. Geta. Well, leave me alone, whoever you are. Tis I, Sostrata. Geta turning round. Why, where are you? You are the very person I was looking for. I was in quest of you. It's very fortunate you have met me what's the matter why are you trembling alas alas my dear geta why in such haste do take breath quite pauses why what means this quite undone it's all over with us say then i entreat you what is the matter now what now geta Ascanus? what about him has abandoned our family then i am undone why so he has attached himself to another woman woe unto wretched me 
and he makes no secret of it. He himself has carried her off openly from a procurer. Are you quite sure of this? Quite sure. I saw it myself, Stostrata, with these same eyes. How wretched me! What is one now to believe, or whom believe? Our own Eskinus, the very life of us all, in whom all our hopes and comforts were centred, who used to swear he could never live a single day without her, who used to say that he would place the infant on his father's knees, and thus entreat that he might be allowed to make her his wife. Dear mistress, forbear weeping, and rather consider what must be done for the future in this matter. Shall we submit to it, or shall we tell it to any person? <laughs> are you in your senses my good man does this seem to you a business to be made known to any one i indeed have no wish for it in the first place then that his feelings are estranged from us the thing itself declares now if we make this known he'll deny it i'm quite sure your reputation and your daughter's character will then be in danger on the other hand if he were fully to confess it as he is in love with another woman, it would not be to her advantage to be given to him. Therefore, under either circumstance, there is need of silence. Oh, by no means in the world. I'll not do it. What is it you say? I'll make it known. Ah, oh, my dear Sostrata, take care what you do. The matter cannot possibly be in a worse position than it is at present. In the first place, she has no portion. Then, besides, that which was as good as a portion, her honor, is lost. She cannot be given in marriage as a virgin. This resource is left. If he should deny it, I have a ring which he lost as evidence of the truth. In fine, Geta, as I am fully conscious that no blame attaches to me, and that neither interest nor any consideration unworthy of her or of myself has had a share in this matter, I will make trial." what am i to say to this i agree as you speak for the best you be off as fast as possible and relate all the matter just as it has happened to her kinsman hegio for he was the best friend of our lamented simulus and has shown a special regard for us geta aside ah faith because nobody else takes any notice of us do you my dear canthara run with all haste and fetch the midwife so that when she is wanted, we may not have to wait for her. So Strata goes into the house and exit Geta and Cantara. Scene three. Enter Dimia. Dimia to himself. Utterly undone. I hear that Ketesipho was with a skeenus at the carrying off of this girl. This sorrow still remains for unhappy me. Should a skeenus be able to seduce him? even him who promises so fair to a cause of debauchery where am i to inquire for him i doubt he has been carried off to some bad house that profligate has persuaded him i'm quite sure but look i see cyrus coming this way i shall now know from him where he is but i faith he is one of the gang if he perceives that i am looking for him the rascal will never tell me I'll not let him know what I want. Scene four. Enter Cyrus at the other side of the stage. Cyrus to himself. We just now told the old gentleman the whole affair just as it happened. I never did see any one more delighted. Demia apart. Oh, Jupiter, the folly of the man. Cyrus continuing. He commended his son. To me, who put them upon this project, he gave thanks. Demia apart. I shall burst asunder. Cyrus continuing. He told down the money instantly, and gave me half a minor besides to spend. That was laid out quite to my liking. Demia apart. Very fine. If he would wish a thing to be nicely managed, entrusted to this fellow cyrus overhearing him ah demia i didn't see you how goes it how should it go i cannot enough wonder at your mode of living here 
why really silly enough and to speak without disguise altogether absurd calls at the door of monsieur's house dromo clean the rest of the fish let the largest conger eel play a little in the water when i come back it shall be boned not before is profligacy like this as for myself it isn't to my taste and i often exclaim against it calls at the door stefanio take care that salt fish is well soaked ye gods by our trust in you is he doing this for any purpose of his own or does he think it creditable to ruin his son wretch that i am methinks i already see the day when aeschines will be running away for want to serve somewhere or other as a soldier oh damia that is wisdom indeed not only to look at a present moment but also to look forward to what's to come well is this music girl still with you why yeah she's indoors how now is he going to keep her at home i believe so such is his madness is it possible an imprudent lenity in his father and a vicious indulgence really i am ashamed and grieved at my brother demea between you there is a great i do not say it because you are here present a too great difference you are every bit of you nothing but wisdom he a mere dreamer would you indeed have suffered that son of yours to act thus i suffer him would i not have smelt it out six months before he attempted it need i be told by you of your foresight i pray he may only continue the same he is at present just as each person wishes his son to be so he turns out what news of him have you seen him to-day what your son aside i'll pack him off into the country to demia i fancy he's busy at the farm long before this are you quite sure he's there what when i saw him part of the way myself very good i was afraid he might be loitering here and extremely angry too why so he attacked his brother in the forum with strong language about this music girl do you really say so oh dear he didn't at all mince the matter for just as the money was being counted out the gentleman came upon us by chance and began exclaiming oh ishinus that you should perpetrate such enormities that you should be guilty of actions so disgraceful to our family oh i shall weep for joy by this you are not squandering your money only but your reputation may he be preserved to me i trust he will be like his forefathers weeping cyrus aside heyday cyrus he is full of these maxims cyrus aside strange indeed he had the means at home of learning them i do everything i can i spare no pains i train him up to it in fine i bid him look into the lives of men as though into a mirror and from others to take an example for himself do this i say quite right avoid that very shrewd this is praiseworthy that's the thing that is considered blamable extremely good and then moreover upon my honour i have not the leisure to listen to you just at present i have got some fish just to my taste and i must take care that they are not spoiled for that would be as much as a crime in me as for you damia not to observe those maxims which you have just been mentioning and so far as i can i lay down precepts for my fellow-servants on the very same plan this is too salt that is quite burned up this is not washed enough 
that is very well done remember and do so another time i carefully instruct them so far as i can to the best of my capacity in short demia i bid them look into their saucepans as though into a mirror and suggest to them what they ought to do i am sensible these things are trifling which we do but what is one to do according as a man is so must you humour him do you wish anything else uh, that more wisdom may be granted you you will be going off into the country i suppose directly for what should you do here where if you do give any good precepts no one will regard them goes into Mesius' house scene five demia alone i certainly will be off as he on whose account i came hither has gone into the country i have a care for him that alone is my own concern since my brother will have it so let him look to the other himself but who is it i see yonder at a distance isn't it he joe of our tribe if i see right i faith it is he ah, a man i have been friendly with from a child good gods we certainly have a great dearth of citizens of that stamp nowadays with the old-fashioned virtue and honesty not in a hurry will any misfortune accrue to the public from him how glad i am to find some remnants of this race even still remaining now i feel some pleasure in living i'll wait here for him to ask how he is and have some conversation with him scene six and the hegio and getta conversing at a distance o oh, immortal gods a disgraceful action getta what is it you tell me such is the fact that so ignoble a deed should come from that family Oh, Aeschinus, assuredly you haven't taken after your father in that. Demia, apart. Why, surely he has heard this about the music girl. That gives him concern. Though a stranger, this father of his thinks nothing of it. Ah, me, I wish he was somewhere close at hand to overhear this. Unless they do as they ought to do, they shall not come off so easily. All our hopes, Hegio, are centred in you you we have for our only friend you are our protector our father the old man simulus when dying recommended us to you if you forsake us we are undone beware how you mention that i neither will do it nor do i think that with due regard to the ties of relationship i could demia apart i'll accost him approaches hegio hegio I bid you welcome right heartily. Hegio, starting. Oh, you're the very man I was looking for. Greetings to you, Demia. Why, what's the matter? Your eldest son, Eschinus, whom you gave to your brother to adopt, has been acting the part of neither an honest man nor a gentleman. And what has he been doing? You knew my friend in years made similis. Why not? He has debauched his daughter, a virgin. Ha! Huh stay demia you have not yet heard the worst is there anything still worse worse by far for this indeed might in some measure have been borne with the hour of night prompted him passion wine young blood his human nature when he was sensible of what he had done he came voluntarily to the girl's mother weeping praying entreating pledging his honour vowing that he would take her home the affair was pardoned hushed up his word taken the girl from that intercourse became pregnant this is the tenth month he worthy fellow has provided himself if it pleased the gods with a music girl to live with the other he has cast off uh, do you say this for certain the mother of the young woman is among us the young woman too the fact speaks for itself this getter besides according to the common run of servants not a bad one or of idle habits he supports them alone maintains the whole family take him bind him examine him upon the matter ay faith put me to the torture demia if such is not the fact besides he will not deny it confront me with him demia aside i am ashamed and what to do or 
how to answer him i don't know pamphila crying out within the house of sostrata ah me i am racked with pains juno lucina bring a hate save me i beseech thee hold is she in labour pray no doubt of it hegio ah she is now imploring your protection demir let her obtain from you spontaneously what the power of the law compels you to give i do entreat the gods that what befit you may at once be done but if your sentiments are otherwise demir i will defend both them and him who is dead to the utmost of my power he was my kinsman we were brought up together from children we were companions in the wars and at home together we experienced the hardships of poverty i will therefore exert myself strive use all methods and find laid down my life rather than forsake these women what answer do you give me i'll go find my brother he joe the advice he gives me upon this matter i'll follow but demia take you care and reflect upon this the more easy you are in your circumstances the more powerful wealthy affluent and noble you are so much the more ought you with equanimity to observe the dictates of justice if you would have yourselves esteemed as men of property go back now everything shall be done that is proper to be done it becomes you to act thus getta show me into sostrata follows getta into sostrata's house demia to himself not without warning on my part of these things happened i only wish it may end here but this immoderate indulgence will undoubtedly lead to some great misfortune i'll go find my brother and vent these feelings upon him exit scene seven enter hegio from sostrata's house and speaking to her within be of good heart sostrata and take care and console her as far as you can i'll go find Michio if he's at the forum and acquaint him with the whole circumstances in their order if it is so that he will do his duty by you let him do so but if his sentiments are otherwise about this matter let him give me his answer that i may know at once what i am to do exit end of act three